Okay, Jason again on this old RV. One of the things that I want to do is have my plates and dishes be a little more secure when I drive. They tend to clamor around quite a bit and uh, sometimes when I open the cabinets uh, objects tend to shift while in motion and I've actually dropped a glass right out of the top just from opening the cabinet even slowly. So I'm going to take this upper, uh, upper right hand corner cabinet and I have cut this piece of wood and it's, it fits in rather perfectly. Let's see. So it fits right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of shims and I'm going to have it raised just a little bit so it sits just a little higher. And then my next step is going to be to put it down here and I'm actually going to put the glasses on it and set them up how I want and then trace them all out. Okay, glasses have all been measured. Okay, so this is what I made. Just used a simple 1 8 inch piece of wood and I got a couple of shims on the sides that are going to get mounted into the cabinet. But as you can see, most of every glass kind of has a home, so to speak. I drilled holes into, into the wood. So when I put the glasses in place, and when we look at it from this angle, you'll see that most of them, only a couple of them actually rest on the floor. This one goes all the way down. But that's okay. The rest of them are, are suspended a little bit. And that wasn't a goal of mine per se, but uh, just makes it all nice and sturdy. So when they're in the cabinets, this is now what I'll be dealing with. Okay, so that's how it's going to rest in the cabinet. I've got my little pieces that are going to support it. Uh, they're not load-bearing, so I'm just going to use little tiny screws, and I've pre-cut some holes. Uh, so now i got to put everything in. Okay, so we're all in now. Uh, we've got it secured. Uh, so it's nice and tight, and glasses aren't going anywhere. That's about all we're going to hear. This one might wobble a little bit, but that's okay. And everything else is nice and in place. In fact, there's even space for most of them. They don't even hit the hit the bottom of the uh, bottom of the shelf there. And on this side, I put in this piece right here, and it's it's kind of got supports on both sides, so that my my plates don't go rattling around. And then I've got my Chimay glass right here, and I grooved a little spot, and I've got room for one more glass. And then what I did was I took a hot glue gun and some extra styrofoam against the door and grooved a little spot for the glass. So as that shuts, keeps it nice and snug. There we go. So now my glasses are nice and secure. They're not going to fall when I open up the cabinet. They're not going to rattle too much around. I don't have to worry about them falling uh, over on their ends and breaking as I drive around. Okay, so here's another improvement I want to work on. This is my bedroom area. My bed's actually under here. It's nice. I've got, you know, enough space to sleep here, but if I feel like getting into the cove, I can get underneath the clothing and it works out fine. My pants are over there because uh, they're a little shorter, so there's a little more head space. But this bar that I've put up here, holding everything nicely, but since it's in the back of the RV, if I hit a bump just right, sometimes these clothes will come flying off the hanger. So I want to come up with a way to kind of keep everything a little more sturdy when I travel. So one of the things I did was I got my hands on an old junky broom handle and I cut it to length. And now what I can do is I can put it up here. You can see it fits right under there and then it fits right on top of the other wedge there. So now what I'll do is I'll just come up with a little clamp right here and I might have to, you know, trial and error experiment with the number of clamps I need, but that should keep the hangers from uh, having enough freedom, if you will, to pop off the, uh, pop off the, cl the clothing rod. Okay, so I've got my clothing hanger, my, uh, my, my, my clothing rod, if you will, that's supported up here. And then, just by making these little shims and that extra broom handle, now the broom handle sits on top of it and it sits nice and snug because of uh, these, little, these little pieces of uh, little wood I, I just cut out. So I pop those into place and I alternate that one's going back to front, that's front to back, and then that should make it so that the clothes don't fall off when I hit bumps. Yeah, it looks like everything will be nice and sturdy now. So if I hit a speed bump or go over a railroad track, I won't have my entire wardrobe hanging out on my bed. So that's a good improvement. Here's another small improvement I made. Uh, I wanted to make sure I have a smaller refrigerator. It's actually an energy efficient. It's 150 watts. So it's uh, about the use of a conventional light bulb. And I just want to put in this little eye hook. What I did was I took advantage of the reversible doors. So here's uh, the hinge for the door, and then here's where the hinge would be. Uh, and all I did was I bought one of those U-bolts and I cut it down. And so it fits right in there, perfect like that, and it keeps the door from opening. 
See, so now it opens. And when I'm driving, now it doesn't. Nice and solid. Okay, here's another innovation that I did. Uh, I have a 1500 peak 3000 watt uh, inverter. I have a battery switch and I have a battery charger. And what I can do is when the car is running, I flip this switch over to number two, and that means that this is drawing power from the car battery. So right now we're getting 12.5 volts from the car battery, and anything that I choose to plug in up here is coming off the car. What I can also do is I can plug in this uh, battery charger, which is hardwired. I did the wiring myself. Those wires run all the way to the back to the house batteries. So if I plug this into the inverter, I can actually use the battery charger on a slow charge, get a couple amps, uh, and start charging my house batteries. So if I'm on a long drive, I can charge my house batteries just from having the car run and the alternator uh, juicing the, uh, the car battery a little more. When it gets somewhere, what I can do is I can turn this over to one, and that means now we're on the house battery. Just so happens that the house battery is, oh, we're also at 12.5 right now. So now everything I plug into the inverter is coming off the house battery. Currently, I'm plugged into shore power, so I have a couple things hooked up to an extension cable, and so they're all kind of just going off shore power. But it gives me the opportunity to avoid using a generator. Um, I wanted to avoid that. They're kind of loud and uh, they, they take up a little more space and really you're just burning another fossil fuel to get energy. Uh, you're not really you know, saving anything, at least with this system. I'm reusing energy that already you know, kind of exists, so to speak. Uh, I, I probably am running the car a little harder, but since the alternator is constantly supplying a little bit extra juice to the battery, it just means I might go through my alternator a little faster or I need a little bit more of a beefy alternator. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I install solar panels, I'm going to hook it up to this system so that it feeds my house battery directly.